live, once again, from our pandemic bunker. Yes, we're still here. It's the 7th Annual Under the Scope Anime Awards, with your host, me. Ah, 2021 began with so much hope. How foolish we were. For as much as things remained the same or grew actively worse across the globe, at least anime saw a resurgence. Yeah, even I can't take myself seriously, but I'm grasping at straws here. 2021 was possibly the strongest year for new anime since I started following it seasonally. As such, this was the most difficult awards show to put together yet. As always, we'll hand out awards across a number of categories. Music, production, characters, and for the first time, a section dedicated to film. Throughout the show, I'll pick my anime of the season for winter, spring, summer, and fall, with these four series becoming our nominees for Anime of the Year 2021. In order for a work to be eligible, it had to air at least in part in 2021, and I had to watch it. That doesn't mean if it's not here, I didn't see it. This year had so many shows I want to recognize that quite a few couldn't make the cut. Now just in case the honor of getting to claim UTS award winner wasn't enough, we of course have a time-honored tradition for our winners. The Sabre Trophy. It's gone through quite the transformation over the years, so what form will it take here? I present to you our coveted prize for 2021, the Royal Sabre. Artoria has never looked better. Huge thank you to Diana Mercolini for once again designing this year's trophy. The work she's done on these over the years has always blown my mind. You can check out her full portfolio on Twitter at Daya underscore XYZ with links in the description. It's wild to think I've been at this for seven years. These awards are a monster of a project that take up an enormous amount of time across the year, but seeing people's excitement for them has always made it worth it. For that reason, I feel the need to let you all know this will be our last UTS Awards. It's been an incredibly rewarding experience, but I speak for myself and editor Nice in saying we're ready to move on to other things. Way to start your own show with that downer. That being said, I can't think of a better way to leave things off than with a year as special as this one. For one last time, here are the UTS Anime Awards. Arguably no season captured the sheer volume of quality works this year more than Winter. Headlined by much-anticipated sequels and several exciting new original projects, I can't remember a season where I followed more anime week to week but which held up all the way to the finish line. The nominees for Anime of the Winter Season are... Yeah. Yurdu Camp Season 2, Sea Station. Skate the Infinity, Bones. Wonder Egg Priority, Cloverworks. Uma Musume Season 2, Studio Kai. Hori Mia, Cloverworks. And the first Royal Sabre goes to... Yurdu Camp Season 2, Director Yoshiaki Kyogoku, Sea Station. For a while, it seemed like this was Wonder Egg Priority's award to lose. And, well, it did. Thanks to some questionable narrative decisions and one of the most transparently horrendous productions we've seen, which is saying something. Wonder Egg faltered and flat out combusted down the stretch, leaving the consistent quality of Yurdu Camp to fill its void. More assured in its second season with its character dynamics established, Yurdu Camp is nothing but vibes all the way through. Rin is one of the best portrayals of introversion I've seen, with season two driving home the energy she finds in being alone, while still recognizing the value of the connections she's made. It's a celebration of the restorative power of nature, of course, but more broadly, of hobbies and passion. In a year filled with setbacks and heartache, it came at a time when I needed it most, solidifying itself among my favorite slice-of-life anime. Moving on to our first major section of these awards, music, we start with maybe the most stacked category of any, best opening. Some of my cuts here would have made the top five another year, but the line had to be drawn. The nominees for Best OP are Cinderella, song by Cider Girl, directed by Kazuki Kawagoe. Love Supreme, song by Fauna, directed by Tatsuya Ishihara. 
Shake and Shake, song by Sumika, directed by Yasuomi Umetsu. Hiro Kosui, song by Yo Kamiyama, directed by Masashi Ishihama. Hikaru Toki, song by Hitsuji Bungaku, directed by Naoko Yamada. Sudachi no Uta, song by Animonelia, directed by Jin Oyama. <laughs> Annoying Sansan Week, song by Junkie, directed by Ryohei Takashida. <laughs> Winds of Transylvania, song by Love Bites, directed by Yujiro Abe. And the winner is... Shake and Shake, by Sumika, directed by Yasuomi Umetsu, Pretty Boy's Detective Club. Bursting with vibrant colors and the high visual energy the series made its staple, Shake and Shake rockets through Dojima's gender transformation as they enter this eccentric group. I'm always a sucker for some fun dance animation, and perhaps most of all, the song is a genuine earworm. An OP with the complete package that never failed to put a smile on my face. I can't say I had quite as much difficulty sorting through the year's best ending sequences, but it still had its fair share of notable standouts. From unique art styles to certified bangers, here are the nominees for Best ED. Nani Nai Nai, song by Rayona, directed by Tomohisa Taguchi. Strobe Memory, song by Maya Uchida, directed by Mayumi Nakamura. Hoshi no Tabibito, song by Sayaka Senbogi and Yumidi Hanemori, directed by Aoi Umeki. Unified Perspective, song by Agraf Feed Annie, directed by Naoko Yama. Comet, song by Yoasobi, directed by Kohei Kadawaki. Infinity, song by Yuri, directed by Akami Hayashi. And the Royal Saber goes to... Comet by Yoasobi, directed by Kohei Kadawaki, B-Star Season 2. A slam dunk choice, Kadawaki's stunning solo work continues the series' penchant for drawing on all sorts of animation styles. When paired with another killer Yoasobi track, that would be enough to win this award on its own. However, the way this ED is used later on in the show recontextualizes the whole thing. Beastar's second season was filled with absurd moments that constantly had me asking if it was genuinely real, but even amongst all that, this ED provided one of its most jaw-dropping. Insert songs can often make for a show's most memorable moments as well. Be it an emotional climax or a dazzling idol performance, a well-placed insert always stands out. The nominees for Best Insert Song are... Winning the Soul by Machiko, Uma Musume Season 2. Saga Jihen by Fran Shushu, Zombieland Saga Revenge. Someday Dreams Come True by QT, Selection Project. What You Don't Know by Rie Murakawa, ReZero Season 2. My Sunset by Riko Sasaki, Kageki Shoujo. Light Ship by the Natsuyasumi Band, Sunny Boy. And the winner is... Saga Jihen by Fran Shushu, Zombieland Saga Revenge. Tying off Yugiri's focus arc, Saga Jihen captures the eclectic, genre-cutting style of Fran Shushu perfectly, mixing the sounds of Yugiri's era into a modern jazz-pop hit. Her backstory already has a different feel than the other girls, taking us back to the Meiji era, so it's fitting her song would do the same. Leading in with the shamisen, it parallels Yugiri's own cultural acclimation to the new time period she finds herself in. A fun romp I could only expect to see in Zombieland Saga. For as many remarkable series as 2021 had, 
it's no surprise there were numerous, equally memorable soundtracks to choose from. Next, the individual pieces that stuck with me the most. Here are the nominees for Best Single Track. Determination by Mabanua, Nomad Megalobox 2. Ashes on the Fire by Kota Yamamoto, Attack on Titan, the final season. Vivi Unrivaled by Satoru Kosaki, Vivi Fluorite Eye Song. Sunny Boy Rhapsody by Toei, Sunny Boy. Awakening by Ryo Kawasaki, To Your Eternity. Yappa Group Camp by Akiyuki Tatayama, Yuru Camp Season 2. And the winner is... Sunny Boy Rhapsody by Toei, Sunny Boy. Maybe you consider this more of an insert song, but semantics aside, Sunny Boy Rhapsody deserves any recognition I can throw at it. Wistful and melancholic, the instrumental covers the series' most climactic scene, as its leads dive headfirst into an uncertain future. Toei are legends in the Japanese math rock scene, and it's easy to see why, with this their first contribution to an anime score. Sunny Boy left me in existential pieces by its end, listening to this track on repeat while I contemplated the meaning of life, a beautiful capstone to its surreal journey across worlds. Finally, we close out music with the overall soundtrack. From some of the biggest names in the industry to a few you might have learned for the first time, the nominees for Best OST are... Sunny Boy by various artists with Shinichiro Watanabe. Heike Monogatari by Kensuke Ushio. Wonder Egg Priority by Dede Mouse. The Case Study of Vanitas by Yuki Kajira. Irina the Vampire Cosmonaut, Yasunori Mitsuda. SSSS Dina Zenon by Shiro Sagisu. And the Royal Saber goes to. Heike Monogatari, Kensuke Ushio. Another year, another UTS award for Kensuke Ushio. If you want me to stop, maybe he should stop making bangers. Ushio's work on Heike may be some of his best yet. It's a frankly bizarre mix of styles, at times utilizing sounds befitting its Heian-era setting, at others breaking out an electric guitar over scenes of war. Jarring at just the right moments, with a palpable heaviness throughout, Heike's score is a beautiful composition. Ushio with Naoko Yamada and Ushio with Science Saru were already perfect combinations separate. Put it all together, and the result is unsurprisingly spectacular. Winter was a tough act to follow, but with a pair of sequels to two of the most fun shows in recent years and another breakout original hit, Spring more than lived up to it. This was as tight as it gets, but only one can move on to Anime of the Year. Here are the nominees for Anime of the Spring Season. Nomad, Megalobox 2, TMS Entertainment. SSSS Dynazanon, Studio Trigger. Odd Taxi, OLM and PICS. Shadows House, Cloverworks. Zombieland Saga Revenge, MAPPA. And the winner is... Odd Taxi, directed by Baku Kinoshita, OLM and PICS. A razor's edge separated Odd Taxi and Nomad, both in my overall top 5 for the year. However, I went with the former for the genius way it strings its tangled web of a narrative together. From frame 1, Odd Taxi knows exactly where it's going and the circuitous path to get there. Hell, even before then, 
The team created in-show Twitter accounts, posted fake podcast episodes, and more that all offered clues to its characters' true identities and intentions. But removing that optional multimedia aspect, Odd Taxi utilizes its ensemble cast to perfection. Loaded with fun personalities, fascinating character studies, and a living world that ties them all together. As tightly written as any anime I've seen in ages, it all builds to a perfect twist that recontextualizes the whole thing, whether you see it coming or not. A worthy contender for Anime of the Year. Next, let's look at the staff behind the year's best shows. With several high-profile production nightmares, 2021 laid bare the problems in this industry more than any year I can recall, from resources stretched too thin to an epidemic of overwork and simply too much anime getting the green light, it's hard to gush about the creative energy still running throughout this medium without couching it in that context. So here, let's spotlight what anime can be, when conditions are right and that creativity is allowed to flourish. Leading off, the award for Best Animation. The nominees are... Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid S, Kyoto Animation. Osama Ranking, Wit Studio. Vivi Fluorite Eyes Song, Wit Studio. SSSS Dinazanon, Studio Trigger. Wonder Egg Priority, Cloverworks. And the winner is... Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid S, Kyoto Animation. Fitting our first award in this section goes to the studio best known for fostering a healthy working environment. The return to TV anime for KyoAni served a reminder of what makes their work so special. Whether it's the effects, smears, and impact frames of a bombastic action sequence, or the soft, organic movements of their character animation, May Dragon encapsulates the visual range the studio can pull off. Its second season saw several younger staff breaking out into new roles, and while the story had its highs and lows, their animation work was nothing short of stellar. May Dragon S reinvigorated my excitement towards the future of the studio, and made for a loving tribute to the legacy of Yasuhiro Takemoto. Tatsuya Ishihara's work leading the enormous task of Maid Dragon S's production was one of many standout directorial jobs from anime's brightest creators in 2021. Next, the nominees for Best Direction are... Sunny Boy, Shingo Natsume. Pretty Boy's Detective Club, Hajime Otani. SSSS Dinazanon, Akira Amemiya. Heike Monogatari, Naoko Yamada. Skate the Infinity, Hiroko Utsumi. And the Royal Saber goes to... Naoko Yamada, Heike Monogatari. The announcement Naoko Yamada had left Kyoto Animation the studio where she'd spent her entire career, came as a bit of a shock. Creatively, Sai and Saru made an obvious fit for her more experimental approach. Yet, Saru has slipped into the terrible working trends that have become the norm in the anime industry. While bringing on a director like Yamada, who has so much experience leading a healthy production, doesn't inherently solve any issues, it seems with Heike at least, she made an impact. Yamada's return to TV anime showcases how much she's grown as a director. Her voice so confident and clear throughout not only its visuals, but its perspective. Tackling a story so entrenched in tragedy must have been an immense task given the circumstances. An inseparable connection between art and artist, as heartbreaking as it is inspiring. In any other year, the ambitious vision of Shingo Natsume's Sunny Boy may have been a lock for the Direction Award. Nevertheless, its worlds of infinite possibility make a surefire pick for our next one. The Royal Saber for Best Art Design goes to Sunny Boy, led by art director Mari Fujino, Studio Pablo, and color designer Ken Hashimoto. Studio Pablo has long since established itself as one of the industry's preeminent background studios, known for their hand-painted artwork. Fujino honed in on color as the key, utilizing complementary colors, rich, saturated hues, and depth 
to produce these striking environments and bring Natsume's vision to life. That's not to say Sunny Boy was without competition. The award could have easily gone to Yuru Camp with its detailed recreations of real-world settings. The background art plays a large role in crafting Yuru Camp's inviting atmosphere, however, just as important is its sound. The award for Best Sound Design goes to Yuru Camp Season 2, led by sound director Takeshi Takadera. Crackling campfire, bubbling hot pot, brisk autumn breeze, Yuru Camp breathes life into its locations through sound. At times, it feels like outdoor ASMR more than anything. Coupled perfectly with its soothing soundtrack, this is healing slice of life at its finest. Our next design award brings us to the characters. With so many interesting original anime in 2021, this proved a tough choice. However, the Royal Saber for best character design goes to Wonder Egg Priority and character designer Saki Takahashi. There's an alternate reality where Wonder Egg staff were given the time and resources to properly complete their unique vision. It's such an imaginative world and series, from its memorable monster designs by Maiko Kobayashi to Takahashi's unique styles for its lead cast. Each girl's personality shines through, and the designs lend themselves well to organic expression, giving Wonder Egg some of the best character animation of the year. Of course, as important to an anime as the character designs themselves is how they work in motion. The award for Best Animation Designs goes to Osama Ranking, led by character designers and chief animation directors Atsuko Nozaki and Masaki Kowake. Sometimes, a lack of detail is exactly what a series needs. Osama Ranking eschews high line counts in its designs in favor of a simpler look that allows them to animate even at a distance and utilize dynamic motion in its action sequences. Sacrificing nothing in terms of expressivity, they provide a perfect mold for its animators to really have fun with the movement a combination that's made the series one of 2021's most exciting productions. Design only tells half the story for these characters, of course. The picture isn't complete without a great vocal performance to match. The award for Best Voice Actor goes to Yumiri Hanamori for her sensational range as Narita Ai, Kageki Shoujo, Ayukawa Yuka, Blue Period, and Kagamihara Nadeshiko, Yuru Camp. If you've seen these three shows, I shouldn't have to say anything more. Her role as Ai was probably my favorite individual performance of the year, capturing the character's trauma with the careful weight it deserves. Add in her powerful emotion as Yuka and the airy, light-hearted Nadeshiko, and Hanemori showed an insane amount of range here. With respect to Kanata Aikawa's debut as Oto Ai, Hanemori was a deserving shoe-in. But there must be lines to voice, right? Yes, we move to writing. We never run out of painful segues here at the UTS Awards. The Royal Saber for Best Script goes to Odd Taxi and writer Kazuya Kanemoto. Odd Taxi has such a strong command on its characters and narrative. The ways all of its disparate threads intertwine and come together constantly engages you. Side characters will get their seemingly one-off episode arc executed to perfection, only for their loose end to connect with some other conflict later in the show. You never know what two plot lines are going to intersect and how. Its writing style is snappy, with dialogue that's always fun. Odd Taxi is the sort of show you want to watch again and again to see what hints you missed and discover all new things about its eccentric story. Finally, we come to the last award for the production section. Best Individual Episode. We'd be here all day if I listed off every great entry deserving of recognition. Nevertheless, here are the nominees for Best Episode. Heike Monogatari No. 9 by Ryohei Takeshida Wonder Egg Priority No. 1 by Shin Wakabayashi SSSS Dinazanon No. 10 Directed by Hideyuki Satake, storyboarded by Kai Ikarashi Sunny Boy No. 11 Directed by Nia Ono, storyboarded by Norifumi Kugai My Next Life as a Villainous All Roots Lead to Doom X No. 8 by Shuntaro Tozawa And the winner is... SSSS Dinazanon No. 10, directed by Hideyuki Satake, storyboarded by Kai Ikarashi. An introspective examination of its characters' psyches, Dinazanon No. 10 gave off legitimate Evangelion vibes to me, and I don't say that lightly. With the series' strongest outing, Ikarashi has firmly established himself as one of anime's most exciting storyboard artists. The episode's reality-bending narrative provided a perfect playground for his dynamic style, with any number of fascinating layouts driving its ideas forward. 
Ikarashi debuted as a storyboarder on SSSS Gridman's memorable number 10, and here he may have outdone even that. I'm excited to see whatever's in store for this universe next, more so if Ikarashi is involved in any capacity. With several of my most anticipated series of the year, Summer 2021 did not disappoint. While winter and spring may have boasted a stronger depth of quality, nothing beats summer at the top, placing four shows in my year-end top 10. The nominees for Anime of the Summer Season are Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid S, Kyoto Animation Kageki Shoujo, Pine Jam Aquatope, PA Works Higurashi no Nakukoro ni Sotsu, Peshone. Sunny Boy, Madhouse. And the winner is... Sunny Boy, directed by Shingo Natsume, Madhouse. Dating all the way back to Space Dandy, Shingo Natsume has always championed individual expression. He stated they didn't have a chief animation director for Sunny Boy because he wanted each episode's team to have the liberty to take its visuals in whatever direction they wanted. That creative freedom shows through in the final product, the sort of genuine art that fills me with hope in this medium. That said, aside from its aesthetics, I still wasn't fully sold around the halfway point. But once its overarching ideas come to the fore, Natsume's ambitious vision truly takes shape. There's a nihilistic optimism to its take on life. There is no inherent meaning to our existence. And still, we search for it, always heading towards an uncertain future. Perhaps our meaning is what we find at the end of that road, the sum of our connections and experiences, life and death. By the end of Sunny Boy's perfect finale, I sat in silence, contemplating the big questions in the way I can only get from art. Next, we move to the category of characters. From heroes to villains, couples to gamers, let's look at 2021's most memorable personalities and arcs, leading off with the leads. The nominees for best main character are... Odokawa, Odd Taxi. Shimarin, Yuru Camp Season 2. Tokai Teo, Umamusume Season 2. Watanabe Sarasa, Kageki Shoujo. Misaki no Kukuru, Aquatope. Tomozaki Fumia, bottom tier character Tomozaki kun. And the winner is. Tokai Teo, Umamusume. While Umamusume's first season proved serviceable, in season two, they did the unthinkable, turning this horse girl idol gotcha ad into one of anime's best sports stories. Rotating Special Week from lead to comedic relief and shifting the spotlight to Tokai Teao ultimately benefited both characters, with the latter's focus arc of navigating a string of grueling injuries among sports' most gut-wrenching narratives. Don't let the setup fool you. All the hallmarks of a special sports anime are here, from the angst of Teao's crushed dreams to her inspirational perseverance. For a second I thought it might be getting excessive, until I learned it actually matches the history of her real-life counterpart right up to the final race. Listen to me when I say it, this horse girl is the GOAT. Not all heroes wear capes. Or something. Uh, side characters. You know, after seven years, maybe my well of segues really has run dry. Anyways, here are the nominees for best side character. Sawaki Momoe, Wonder Egg Priority. Chief, Nomad, Megalobox 2. Elma, Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid S. Tokuko, Heike Monogatari. Ayukawa Yuka, Blue Period. Minami Yume. SSSS Dina Zenon. And the Royal Saber goes to. Chief. Nomad Megalobox 2.
It may be difficult to stop the vicious cycle of fear born from ignorance, but I wanted to make a stand, however slight. That's the feeling I poured into the story. Nomad writer Katsuhiko Manabe. Nomad captures immigrant experiences in a way that's really beautiful, true to life, and generally absent from anime. Its message would not have come through without the care its staff put into their stories and culture. As its socio-political conflict centers around Joe and Mac, Chief is its heart and soul. His wisdom serves as a guide for Joe at his lowest, who carries his spirit with him through the finish. Regardless of your feelings towards Megalobox's first season, do yourself the favor of watching Nomad, a story of dreams and home, loss and redemption, that begins and ends with Chief. Okay, now let's get serious. Time to hand out some truly major hardware. Best Girl and Best Boy. For all of 2021's killer sequels, there was one in particular that really came out of nowhere and made my year. It dropped its first episode on New Year's before popping in every few months just to keep me going. However, there's no greater gift this show gave me than the ability to officially declare Best Girl 2021 is... Jean d'Arc Alter Fate Grand Carnival. Much like its predecessor Carnival Phantasm was to Fate Stay Night, Fate Grand Carnival is a delightful send-up of FGO and its fan culture, littered with jokes only writers in tune with the fandom could draw up. Jolter's Christmas-themed episode is my fave, not just for giving us three Maya Sakamoto voice characters at once, but showcasing what makes Jolter one of Fate's most fun characters. In conclusion, I have decided to simp harder than ever before. From Best Girl, we move to Best Antagonist. Wait, what? That can't be right. Where's Best Boy? Do I have the wrong card? No, no, it says right here, Best Antagonist. That's weird. Well, here are the nominees, I guess. Satoko, Higurashi no Nakukoro ni Sotsu. Yano, Odd Taxi. Adam, Skate the Infinity. Mac, Nomad Megalobox 2. Nizu, B-Stars 2. And the winner is... Satoko, Higurashi Sotsu. Alright, so three of these nominees are among the goofiest characters of the year, but damn if they don't make their show some of the most fun. Higurashi Gosotsu is a weird ride to say the least, but as soon as I let go of trying to take any of its insane bullshit too seriously, it became a thrill ride anticipating the toxic depth Satoko would sink to next. Possessing next to zero logic, yet still somehow outsmarting her counterpart despite, uh, years of experience, Satoko's motivation is absurd, and her actions nothing short of feral. A perfect chaotic driver for this bizarre series. Satoko and Rika could have made an interesting fit for our next award, though these duos possess a little less murderous intent. The nominees for Best Relationship are... Reki and Longa, Skate the Infinity. Kazuma and Sakurai, My Senpai is Annoying. Hori and Miyamura, Hori Mia. Kukuru and Fuka, Aquatope. Yume and Yomugi, SSSS Dinazenon. And the winner is... Kukuru and Fuka, Aquatope. Two girls navigating their shattered dreams? Sign me up for that angst. PA Works has a good track record with these sorts of young adult stories dating all the way back to Hanasaku Iroha, with Aquatope the latest in line. The future rarely ever pans out exactly the way we want it. Kukuru and Fuka's struggle to adapt to bitter reality morphs into a beautiful take on passion, self-discovery, and finding a place to belong. Their arcs will both hit home for a lot of us 20-somethings, and the strength of their connection to each other places Aquatope among 2021's most memorable works. Our final award in the character section fittingly goes to the show that puts all of the above together. Here are the nominees for Best Cast. Blue Period. Osama Ranking. Odd Taxi. Nomad, Megalobox 2. 
Kageki Shoujo. And the Royal Saber goes to... Kageki Shoujo. All four choices here present deep, nuanced casts, but none wedge their way into my heart more than Kageki's band of theater kids. The dynamic between its leads is a delight, giving the show a surprising comedic edge to match their poignant connection. Sadasa provides Ai the unconditional love and support of a friend, while Ai comes to see her as a star to strive for. Kageki's supporting cast brims with fun personalities and compelling focus stories that drive at the root of the toxic environment the competitive theater school can create. Kageki Shoujo deals with some incredibly heavy content, but it always treats its characters with the respect and their trauma the weight they deserve. It walks a fine line and certainly isn't perfect. However, I never felt like its heart isn't in the right place. Rounding out our seasonal awards, Fall had the most unknowns of any season for me going in. After such a stellar year, it looked like 2021 might end light. But that went out the window with the announcement of my favorite director's latest project just a few weeks before the season began. Add in several adaptations for beloved manga, and Fall sent 2021 outright. Here are the nominees for anime of the fall season. Osama Ranking. Wit Studio. My Senpai is Annoying, Dogakobo. Irina the Vampire Cosmonaut, Arvo Animation. Heike Monogatari, Science Saru. Blue Period, Seven Arcs. And the final work, moving on to Anime of the Year, is... Heike Monogatari, directed by Naoko Yamada, Science Saru. Following the lives of the Tyra clan in the final days of their power, Yamada's eye for capturing the ephemeral moments of humanity once again characterizes her work. It's a sign of a great artist to be able to say so much through so little. However, where her earlier stories so often looked ahead, it's characters leaving adolescence before an open sky. Here, these scenes are colored with sorrow, be it a nostalgic longing for the past or the fear of a future which brings only suffering. This is a story of grief, coming from a place of tragedy. How do you carry forward in the wake of despair? Where do you find peace? Through Heike Monogatari, Yamada seems to offer her own answers. A devastatingly powerful work, which cements the director as one of this medium's most seminal voices. Our final section of the UTS Awards is something I probably should have done years ago a category dedicated only to film. The pandemic has hit the theater industry particularly hard, throwing release windows off across the board. My criteria for inclusion is typically any film made available to me in the US that year. However, with COVID making end of 2020 releases tricky for me to see for last year's awards, this section is more of a best films of late 2020 through 2021. As always, some films released in Japan didn't make their way to the US as of January 1st, Still, it's not like I have a shortage of choices, beginning with our first award for Best Film Soundtrack. The nominees are... Shoujo Kageki Review Starlight the Movie, Tatsuya Kato and Yoshiaki Fujisawa. Words bubble up like soda pop, Kensuke Ushio. Jose, the Tiger and the Fish. Evan Call. Violet Evergarden, the movie. Evan Call. Fate Stay Night, Heaven's Feel 3, Spring Song, Yuki Kajira. And the Royal Saber goes to... Heaven's Feel 3, Spring Song, Yuki Kajira. After passing on Kajita's work for Heaven's Feel Parts 1 and 2, it's time I finally recognize what was some of her best to date. Her use of leitmotif works wonders, as the various themes for Sakura form a core aspect to her characterization across the trilogy. Spring Song's OST blends old and new tracks as well as any Fate anime adaptation. 
Kajiro's remixes of Fate Stay Night classics are some of the best iterations of those pieces, while her original compositions match the more somber tone of Heaven's Field perfectly, with the best saved for last. Many of Spring Song's most memorable moments are thanks in large part to Yuki Kajira. Apparently, you can't have an anime film without a musical number, judging by the sheer output of song and dance sequences across this year's list. From wacky to blood pumping, I couldn't pass on the chance to highlight these moments. The nominees for best song in film are... Pen Chikara Katana, Shoujo Kageki Review Starlight the Movie. Yamazakura, Words Bubble Up Like Soda Pop. Let's Make an Anime, Shiro Bako the Movie. Kimi no Yokogao, Ongaku Our Sound. Yoruga Akeru, given the movie. And the winner is. Pen Chikara Katana, sung by Hinata Sato and Moeka Koizumi, composed by Junichi Sato, Shoujo Kageki Review Starlight, the movie. With respect to these other choices, this was always going to come down to which Starlight song I wanted to pick. From Kuro Maya's angsty echo of the Review of Pride, to Mahiru's Yandere Turn, and Hikaren's grand finale, all are a worthy choice, but the Junana review has lived rent-free in my head ever since watching. The song begins as a continuation of Nana's wild screen Baroque from earlier in the film, before becoming Juna's song, as she fights back and realizes her strength, forcing Nana to recognize her true self. What have you been looking at all this time? she asks. This is Juna's shining moment, a spectacle worthy of a star. Whether through increased resources or different production cycles, film tends to showcase the best this medium has to offer in animation. Covering a broad range of styles, these next movies illustrate not only anime's strength, but its creative diversity. Here are the nominees for Best Animation in Film. Demon Slayer Mugen Train, UFO Table. Ongaku R Sound, Rock and Roll Mountain and Tip Top. Violet Evergarden the movie, Kyoto Animation. Fate Stay Night Heavens Feel 3 Spring Song, UFO Table. Jose the Tiger and the Fish, Bones. And the winner is... Violet Evergarden the movie, Kyoto Animation. Completing the Kyoani sweep of the two animation awards, Violet Evergarden takes on a much different philosophy than Maid Dragon, focused on ornate detail, high line counts, and rich painterly artwork. It's incredible, then, how much motion its staff pour into it. It's one thing to draw such detailed design in stills, but to animate that with as much movement and expression as an action romp? The movie didn't always go in the narrative direction I personally wanted out of the franchise. However, it's nothing short of an artistic marvel in its visuals. Given May Dragon S and the Evergarden movie were the final works for many at the studio, I can't think of a better mark for their incredible vision, talent, and art. Next, I want to recognize an individual moment of brilliance that honestly dropped my jaw when I first saw it. The award for best cut of animation goes to Ko Yoshinari, Fate Grand Order Camelot Wandering Agataram. Everything you see here is 2D animated. Yes, even including the fire. Despite giving our trophy its namesake, Camelot surely would have featured much more heavily had Part 2 become available in the US before the end of the year. Part 1 is a bit of a slog by comparison in terms of narrative and production. Nevertheless, this standout sequence animated entirely by Ko Yoshinari captures why he's one of the industry's strongest animators. His experimental approach leads to all sorts of unique art styles and compositions very, very few could pull off. Had Camelot Part 2 been included in these awards, it would have had something to say about this next one. The nominees for Best Fight are... 
Tendo Maya vs. Claudine Saicho, Shoujo Kagaki Review Starlight the Movie. Rengoku vs. Akaza, Demon Slayer Mugen Train. Miyamori and Mirai vs. GPS, Shirobako the Movie. Rider vs. Saber Altar, Fate Stay Night Heaven's Feel 3 Spring Song. Kare vs. Am, The Twins, Star Wars Visions. And the Royal Saber goes to... Rider vs. Saber Altar, Fate Stay Night Heaven's Feel 3 Spring Song. How could I not give a Saber Award to the King herself? At least until I see the later FGO adaptations, this is not just Fate's best animated fight to date, but one of anime's best. What can I even say about it that would do it justice? Fate's Day Night's first major battle between servants came with Ryder and Saber's clash in the Fate route. Fitting then, the final servant bout returns to the same, only now the roles reversed. Hyped to the max with a killer climax, this is Fate at its most fun. In a year where so many franchises brought their stories to an end, it's no surprise this next category is filled with the directors seeing those visions through. The nominees for Best Direction are... Evangelion 3.0 plus 1.0, Thrice Upon a Time, Hideaki Anno. Fate Stay Night Heaven's Feel 3 Spring Song, Tomonori Sudo. Ongaku R Sound, Kenji Iwaisawa. Shoujo Kageki Review Starlight the Movie, Tomohiro Furukawa. Shirobako the Movie, Tsutomu Mizushima. And the winner is... Tomohiro Furukawa, Shoujo Kageki Review Starlight the Movie. With massive respect to Iwaisawa's form-breaking approach in Ongaku and Anno's capstone to anime's landmark property, no movie this year blew me away with its composition more than Starlight. It's like Furukawa took it as a personal challenge to see how many dynamic compositions he could squeeze out of a two-hour runtime. Around the end of its first act, Starlight says, Enough with the connective tissue, we know why you're here and a non-stop string of its most evocative set pieces ensues, right through to the end of the film. The staging of its reviews has always been the series' most fascinating aspect to me, and here, we see what Furukawa and his team can come up with given the proper time to do so. If this is Starlight's curtain call, take a bow. Each of Starlight's girls offered a thrilling climax to their arcs, but they did not shine alone on stage. The nominees for Best Character in Film are... Ikari Gendo, Evangelion 3.0 plus 1.0, Thrice Upon a Time. Miyamori Aoi, Shirobako the Movie. Emi Yashiro, Fate Stay Night Heaven's Feel 3 Spring Song. Claudia Hodgins, Violet Evergarden the Movie. Hoshimi Juna, Shoujo Kageki Review Starlight the Movie. And the winner is... Ikari Gendo, Evangelion 3.0 plus 1.0, Thrice Upon a Time. Alright, this section has gone on long enough without me addressing the giant CG head in the room. Before I started the rebuilds, the biggest question I had was why. What did Anno still have to say through this franchise that's sort of become his life's work? Gendo's arc in Thrice, among other things, went a long way towards justifying the rebuild's necessity. The film centers on this notion of opening yourself up to the world, first through Rei, who passes it along to Shinji, and ultimately, to his father. Thrice offers a deep dive into the character other Eva iterations didn't quite explore to the same extent, revealing a lonely, isolated man whose inability to love and live among others closed himself off from reality. He'll certainly go down as one of anime's best antagonists. Huh? What's going on here? Ah yes, there he is. I knew I'd left this award somewhere. Best Boy of 2021 goes to Kotomine Kire, Fate Stay Night Heaven's Feel 3 Spring Song. Kire steals the show every second he's on screen. His presence is immense, thanks in no small part to Joji Nakata, a man so born to play the role he attends press events in full Kirei cosplay. 
Sometimes, you don't need a morally complex character to make a great villain. You just need a bad dude whose core conflict is coming to terms with how much joy he finds in being bad. Bonus points if he wants to throw hands with an idealistic teenager. Just an awful, wicked man, no doubt about it. And boy, does he make it fun. One of 2021's most exciting anime projects brought the medium to a global stage, a collaboration that seemed a perfect fit. The award for Best Short goes to Lop and Ocho, Geno Studio, Star Wars Visions. The Visions anthology brimmed with the creative force anime is the perfect conduit to provide, taking the Star Wars universe in unique directions not often explored. None of its shorts made better use of the format for me, however, than Lop and Ocho. Yuki Igarashi pens an array of eye-catching compositions, and the central dynamic at play leads to some exhilarating set pieces. Some of Vision's shorts felt like they bit off more than they could chew, but Lot managed to immediately hook you into its political intrigue and family drama, offer what felt like a rich, full story, while leaving the door open for more. In years past, I've simply sprinkled a few film awards throughout the show for the small handful I wanted to recognize. But in 2021, I couldn't possibly get to them all without devoting this entire section. So many left a lasting impression, but only one can be crowned at the top. Here are the nominees for Best Film of 2021. Shiro Bako the Movie, PA Works. Evangelion 3.0 plus 1.0, Thrice Upon a Time, Studio Kara. Fate Stay Night, Heaven's Feel 3, Spring Song, UFO Table. Shoujo Kageki Review Starlight the Movie, Kinema Citrus. Words Bubble Up Like Soda Pop, Sublimation and Signal MD. And the Royal Saber goes to... Evangelion 3.0 plus 1.0, Thrice Upon a Time, directed by Hideaki Anno, Studio Kata. 2021 was a special year of anime for me. Three of my favorite media franchises came to their own version of ends that captured why I loved them so dearly in the first place. Spring Song brought the mainline Fate series to a close in a way I didn't think possible of Stay Night. Their debut Starlight movie served as a sort of epilogue for each of its pairings as they head towards their next stage. Both among my favorite anime films, but nobody ends things like Evangelion and Hideaki Anno. Through Thrice, you can sense the weight of 25 years, the different headspace Anno approached these films from. If NGE and End of Eva are about learning to love yourself and to let yourself be loved, the rebuilds to me are about loving others and living in the world. Thrice is a hopeful film. Hope in the future, in people, in yourself. It's an escape from this internal prison. A goodbye. And now, we've arrived at the end. Our final UTS award. 2021 had so many reminders of what makes this medium special. Its stories and voices, the power of animation. There were so many series worthy of mention, but I can't think of a more representative group of why I watch anime than these final four. Without further ado, here are the nominees for Anime of the Year 2021. From Winter, Yurdu Camp Season 2, directed by Yoshiaki Kyogoku, Sea Station. From Spring, Odd Taxi, directed by Baku Kinoshita, OLM, and PICS. From Summer, Sunny Boy, directed by Shingo Natsume, Madhouse. From Fall, Heike Monogatari, directed by Naoko Yamada, Science Saru. And the Royal Saber for Anime of the Year 2021 goes to... The sound of the Gion Shoja bells echoes the impermanence of all things. It's one of a very few truths the inevitability of the end. 
Heike Monogatari reckons with perhaps the most universal human experience. Suffering. Through our connections, our shared dreams, and our love, the transience of our existence can be the hardest thing we have to accept. It's tempting to run from it, but in grief, we cannot. To grieve is to live with death. Through Biwa, the series captures the powerlessness and anger felt in the face of it. Heike forced me to examine my own grief over the past year, ultimately offering a perspective on life I'll never forget. How does one overcome suffering, the series asks? Through hope, through faith, through life. The survivors carry the lives of their loved ones on through memory and story. The torch passes along a never-ending line. Heike is not an easy watch in more ways than one. Composer Kensuke Ushio joked that even Japanese viewers may be looking at Wikipedia to keep its characters in conflict straight. But if you put in the work, you'll find a series that captures this human experience in ways that will stick with me for a long, long time. Because no matter where our lives have taken us, or where they're going, we are all living our Heike story. And that's a wrap on the UTS Anime Awards. I hope you had fun with us, not just here, but through all the years. I can't thank everyone enough for your support and enthusiasm. You're the reason we kept making these, and I hope we lived up to it. Enormous shout out to Mr. Nice Guy for putting up with me every December and January the last five years. Editing these is such a monumental task, and he's always been up to it. I couldn't ask for a better co-pilot. And on that note, we can now close the curtain on our show. This is not the end for Under the Scope, however, so be sure to stay tuned for whatever comes next. As always, thanks for watching. Until next time.